Hey guys, this is a new version of Auto Smear. It's been a really long time since the first version, but this version is way better, way more stable than the straight smears. And we, I have a new full smear group that has curved smears. It has duplicates. You have a lot more control. And I just think it looks generally a lot better. So I hope you guys enjoy this. I hope you maybe go to my Gumroad and get it. And uh, yeah, let's get on to the video. So this add-on has two versions, a free version, which you can see on the left, and a paid version, which you can see on the right. In the paid version, you obviously just get both of them. But this, the free one is like a more straight smear. And then the one on the right, you can see uh, we have these curved smears. And then we also have um, duplicates. And I'm kind of over-exaggerating the duplicates here just so you can see them. But you can obviously tone them down on whatever you're making. And that's not all the paid version gets you. In the free version, all you'll get is these um, straight smears, but in the paid version, you will get not only both of these, you will also get this panel in the tool section of the end menu where you can clean up your smears, you can refresh stuff. So if I want to reset a smear, I'll use this refresh selected smear, and then you can see if I go to the object, the modifier is completely reset to what it originally was. I'm going to go ahead and undo that. And now... The other ones, I can remove smears. So if I clean select the smears, that'll delete uh, everything related to a smearing on this object. And if I want to get rid of all the smears in the scene, I can clean all smears. And you'll see that deleted any objects that were smeared and it got rid of any modifiers on our objects. So that's what you get in the paid version. But uh, with that feature overview done, let's move on to how to actually use the add on. I just got this model from Mixamo. It's a really simple animation, just her like slamming the ground. If I want to smear her, all I'm going to do is select the model, hit Shift A, Mesh, and then at the bottom you'll see Add Smear. And you can either do Full Smear if you paid for the add-on, or you can do Straight Smear if you either got it for free or you paid. I'll start with the Straight Smear. So it'll add this modifier and make a new object. And if I play the animation, you'll see nothing happens. And that's because in the vertex group, I don't have anything yet. So for this, I'm just going to make it the whole mesh. If I want it to be the entire mesh, I don't want a vertex group. I can just click this little square right next to the vertex group, and that'll turn it into a checkbox. And then if I check it, it'll smear the whole mesh. And now if I play, you can see we have smearing. And it looks pretty good. I still do like these straight smears, although they don't have duplicates, but I think they still look pretty good. And if your animation is on twos, you can check this box down here. And on this animation, it doesn't really change much when you check that box, but on some animations, it can get a little glitchy if you don't do that, because it sometimes the smears disappear every other frame, or there's just some weird bugginess with them moving when they're not supposed to. So this just clears all of that up and makes it work properly. And the offset timing is just if, like let's say your mesh updates on every even frame, like this one is, if you do the offset timing, then the smears will update every odd frame. That's just to give you a little more control. And everything else is the same as it used to be in my original version of Auto Smear. Just a lot more stable now because it's taking use of simulation nodes. That's the straight smears. So if I go back to my model with nothing, I can go Shift A, Mesh, Add Smear, Full Smear, if I do that, You'll see the original mesh doesn't actually have any modifier, and that's because it's on this new object that was created. And you can see this one has a lot of settings. Most of them, to be honest, are materials, because we don't really have a good way of keeping materials through simulations, which is really annoying, and I hope they fix soon. But whenever you put something through a simulation, it kind of just destroys the materials. So in all of these material slots, you'll see material 0, material 1, material 2. That's if on your original model, like this one only has one material, but let's say it had like three materials, maybe this one's like an emission or something. This one would be material zero, material one, material two. And on your smear, you would just put those in here. And that is for the duplicates. And then the smear material is for the actual smears. Let me turn the smear group on. I'm gonna do the same thing I did before, clicking the square and checking the box so that it just smears the whole mesh. And then if I play, you'll see we have some duplicates. No smears yet. Um, I think I'm gonna turn the velocity threshold down, maybe 0.2. And now we have a smear. I want a, I want a little more, so I'll make my probability a little bit higher, 0 0.02. Yeah, that looks good. Now we have two smears. And you can see our duplicates working good. Uh, the smears, though, they're a little bit low res. You can see if I go into wireframe here, there's not a lot of 
topology. So I'm going to change the resolution to maybe 0.01. Yeah, there we go. That's a lot smoother. And I can turn the start value up and that will trim the curves uh, because I want them to only go to about, about a wireframe. I want them to only go to about where the duplicates are. So I'll make them like 0 0.5, 0 0.6. There we go. Yeah, now they're a lot smaller and that looks pretty good in my opinion. And you can see how fast you can get really good results with this. And if I go to the ends of the mesh, the holes don't get filled, but that's barely noticeable. So it, it gets smoothed a lot where it was cut off from the body. So it looks more natural. It's not just hard polygons, you know? And in motion, you don't really see that hole ever. So now all of these settings, I think are pretty self-explanatory. So a quick interjection. Um, since I recorded that, I've added a couple of things in the duplicate controls. There is now an option to, instead of having instanced um, curves coming off of it for the smears, you can now use modeled. So just depends on what you think looks better. The modeled is a little bit faster performance wise, so that might be a benefit to you. But yeah, just wanted to give a little more control on the way you want it to look. So yeah, anyways, back to the rest of the video. But then this image texture settings, this is where it gets a little weird. So you'll see all of these are white right now and I can make the duplicates not white by just making this whatever material your original object is. And you can see our smears on the duplicates all inherit those properties as well. And then our smears, I'm gonna make a new material actually. And I'll just call this smear material and then I'll make that this material and if I go into my node editor I'm going to make an attribute and I'll call this attribute color and if I view this you see it's just black right now and I'm actually gonna make the duplicate lifetime zero so we can just see the smears better our attribute right now is blank there's nothing there and that's because we need to input our image so for this what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on my original mesh and then I'll go to the material that it has and I'll see whatever the base color is so for this one the base color is called fi file 11 Mixamo has some weird names. So I'll make it file 11 and then I need to input the name of the UV map of this object. So I'll go to objects data properties in with this selected, go to the UV maps and in this one it's called map one. So I can just hit control Z while hovering over that. And then on my smears again, I'll just hit control V on input UV map. And then if I start playing this again, our smears now have color and You'll see this one is coming from this thumb right here. So it's the color of the thumb. This one's coming from the shirt. So it's the color of the shirt. And right now I'm not going to make it into an actual material. I'm just going to leave it as is just like as an omission. And I'll turn my duplicates back on. And there we go. Our smears fully colored with duplicates and everything. Looks pretty good. As of right now, there is only support for one image texture because I didn't want to flood this panel with like a bunch of image textures right here. I will, once Blender introduces sub panels in like 4.1 or whenever that's gonna be, I'll be making an update where you can have a bunch of image textures. Um, hopefully they, eventually there's a better way to do this. Right now, this is kind of the best we can do. And if your mesh has a procedural material with like noise textures and stuff, you can uh, bake them. There's a couple of good or add-ons for that. There's uh, bake a node which is pretty good there's bake lab which is good all of those they work but you can bake them down or you could just use default blender to be honest although that's kind of annoying you can bake your textures down into one and then use them as the image texture here oh another thing you have some other controls for the materials of the smear in here in this i'll just use the same attribute you can type uh, curve underscore u u has to be capitalized that'll give you a zero to one gradient along the curve and you can use that for blending alpha you could use that for blending a mission i'll do that real quick here actually now our smears are kind of fading out and you can use this for a bunch of stuff